opportunity for all of you to introduce yourselves further and explain what exactly do you work on so that me and the audience kind of understands what is the process of your work. So I'd like to start with Sarika ji. Thanks, Asta. Uh, so as uh, I have been already introduced, as I'm an architect and an urban planner, uh, but never practice as an architect to design houses or buildings, but always uh, I was into city planning, like designing cities for uh, sustainable cities for better livable and creating livable cities. So that is my uh, core work, but uh, uh, one of the major initiative is, you know, uh, promoting walking and cycling in the cities and using sustainable mobility in the cities. That is uh, my core area of work. And again, it is just not promoting, but make sure that our pedestrians and cyclists are safe in our city. So basically not doing building design, but more into street design. That, that is the work I do. And I'm basically one of the co-founder of India's first car free day called Rahagiri Day. So uh, I um, spread uh, and walk across different states and cities to promote walking and cycling through our Rahagiri Day campaign. I think most of us, you know about Rahagiri Day. It has been spread out to 70 cities. We started in Gurgaon in 2013. So that is my core area of work, actually. Can we have Shubhra ji? <clears throat> sure. And today is the World Car Free Day, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So basically, uh, I'm a journalist. I was uh, trained as a journalist after my MBA. I joined the Economic Times and I uh, wrote for uh, as a feature writer uh, with Economic Times. Uh, uh, and after that, I joined a business magazine and started writing on infrastructure issues. Um, I soon became the editor of two business magazines, but in 2002, 12, I quit my work as a journalist and editor to start something called Gurgaon First. Um, uh, basically, uh, Gurgaon First um, uh, does a lot of uh, workshops and also uh, we've uh, come out with a lot of handbooks on Gurugram. The idea was to make an equitable, sustainable Gurugram and um, uh, we get different stakeholders uh, together to talk about issues that concern the city. And the prime uh, issue that uh, concerns the city, it is a modern city, it is a, a millennial city, but uh, on uh, sustainability issues, um, it has not uh, scored so much. And therefore, uh, the idea is to create greater awareness about these issues. And um, since we are in an art forum, <clears throat> I would like to also say that I uh, have started dabbling in uh, music for a cause. So I, I, I uh, did the first uh, Swachita anthem for Gurugram last year, and I'm creating another song for uh, waste management. So I've, I'm trying to use my, um, uh, you know, my uh, uh, interest in writing songs and poetry and also in singing uh, for uh, music for a cause. So uh, the water uh, song should also be out uh, in some time uh, in the next two months. Thank well, you. That's such a wonderful way to actually put your message across through poetry, through music. I think we can all connect to it. So all the best for that. Thank you so much. Can we have Boileta? Uh, so I'm an ex-HR um, professional. And with this background, also in 2012, <laughs> I decided to quit my corporate job uh, that I was not much enjoying. And we started, I shifted to India. Uh, I'm from Poland, by the way. And I came to India and with my partner, we decided to create an initiative where we help young people to better navigate through their careers and to choose something that they really love, that they really connect to. Over a period of time, we did a lot of different workshop events um, to realize that just simply doing what we love it's not enough anymore. We don't have that privilege to, to do that. Therefore, whatever we do, we should connect that passion to something which is greater for all of us. And that's what we call uh, today the um, United Nations Sustainable Development Goals are the basic framework to show us what are the areas that we could connect our passion and our efforts every single day as an uh, employee, uh, as a entrepreneurs, as a employers, uh, in order to do something, to use our passion, to use our skills, but in order to create a better world. 
That is so interesting. So we have so many, like we have all three of you from different genres and work of lines that you are doing in your own fields and doing it so well. So I'd just like to add to that a little bit. So I'm a designer myself and we work with a lot of uh, village clusters in terms of weavers to positively impact them in a way that we are trying to promote the weaves that they make and then we put forward all of that into a more contemporary form so that uh, the audience at the present day is more receptive to those ideas. So uh, it's very interesting because all this, it's almost been eight years for me that I've been doing this and we've traveled the length and breadth of the country to find out good weavers or people or to kind of preserve the heritage that we have. And um, so I'd like, so I've had like a lot of um, instances where there have been a lot of challenges for us to put this forth, the ideas that we have to the people who, it's like when you're working in a certain arena or where the people are working in a certain format for a longer while, the challenge is to how we can kind of give them new ideas or say uh, introduce them to new forms of working. So in my personal journey, that has been the most challenging thing. I would like to understand your challenges across, like uh, how has it been for you guys and what are the challenges that you faced and how you've managed to, uh, you know, come forth and take something that's, that you're so passionate about forward in life. So can we start with you, Violetta? What are the challenges that you faced while you were trying to set up? Mm. <laughs> mm. Six years ago when we started the What You Love movement, uh, one of the biggest challenge was the acceptability that you can actually do something that you love and make profits out of it. Because whenever we uh, talk to especially young people who were, let's say, in the last years of college, they could not imagine that not being an engineer or a CA or a doctor, you can actually have a successful life because all of that was defined by their previous generations, by the examples that they had. So it took us some time at the beginning to actually showcase a couple of examples and become a proof of ourselves as well, right. to, to show that actually you can create the world, uh, your world, your work, mm -hmm. as you want it, you can design it, and uh, you can easily make something which is good for the world and make money out of it. So just to elaborate a little more on that, would you have somebody, like a story or an anecdote or, uh, you know, like a life experience that you'd like to share of how you've transformed somebody's, uh, you know, like somebody's passion into a more sustainable career for them? Would you have like an example for us maybe? I'm wondering which example to choose. <laughs> I will tell you about the example of a boy who, um, it make a lot of, uh, it stayed with me for a long time. So there was this boy from Kashmir, and he came to Delhi. We met him around three years, three four years ago. There was a curfew in uh, Kashmir, and they were fighting at that time. And he came with his brother, with his cousin. So the cousin was speaking for him. He couldn't speak. He was just sitting like this, very nervous, trembling completely. I look at his nails, half, half, not there. <laughs> and we started the meeting by just simply, okay, relax. Uh, let's brief together, because he was not able to even say anything. And the issue was that uh, he was a young um, genius. He was making some uh, innovations, like for instance, uh, water purifiers for farmers in a small bottle that they, they could do, use it in their farming. And it was for around 100, 200 rupees um, invention. Um, but because he was always this kind of a child who would break the toys, make something new, the parents uh, were very unhappy with him because why did, why did you destroy this toy again? So now he was a 19 year old, 18 or 19 year old and he wanted, uh, he needed to decide his studies. Uh, because of his poor background, he couldn't go to a proper college to, to pay for his studies and because he was particularly interesting in that area, his marks were not good enough to give him an interest. So he was only with the option of paying one lakh to some university here around Delhi and he had no money for that. So what we told him is that, okay, fine, don't go back to Kashmir right now. What we're gonna do is, first we're gonna find you a place to stay. We found him a place where he was working as a, um, he was helping in a hostel. So he was meeting a lot of international people. His language skills improved a lot by that. Another thing is we said, you will not apply to any of these IT Delhi's or any other colleges here. You're gonna apply to MIT, the one in US. 
and uh, the whole year, the whole half a year, half a year, he was preparing for those studies. We arranged for him um, uh, the coaching center where he could do it and help him to write the application. And when he was in that uh, hostel, meeting people from all over the world saying that I am about to apply for MIT, from this boy trembling, Right, and he was a, already a different person. So this, just to keep this story uh, short, he didn't get into MIT, but that was not the point. The point was to restore his faith that he can do something. Right. And uh, he found another university here. He finished it. Now he's back into Kashmir. He has his own innovation studio, uh, I think, uh, with some kind of a, um, a found from the ministry over there. So basically, he, he's continuing his passion for innovation in back home for his people, as he always wanted for the farmers. So that's something that really stay with me, that you, with all this turmoil in your life, you can actually find that way to, that to follow so your passion. That is so interesting. That is so interesting and impressive as to how you're changing lives. That is really interesting. Can I have yeah, you? Sure. Yeah. And so, um, you know, two or three challenges really. One is uh, that, uh, you know, we are always uh, struggling with a mindset change when we're talking even about things like waste segregation, you know. So there is a mindset, there's, we are habitual, or even if you're talking about plastics, you know, do away with the plastics. So, you know, we, we're so used to carrying the, you know, or buying the plastic bottle. So, so the, the, one of the changes that we deal with, the change in attitude, the change in mindsets, you know, and telling people that this is the right thing to do. And um, uh, so in that case, I think Sarika and us, you know, so even, for example, uh, Sarika is now talking about, uh, you know, that please make space for cyclists, pedestrians. Let our streets and roads be more democratic. Let them be for all, not just for cars. So, you know, so these are some of the mindset changes that we deal with. So awareness is what you're Awareness to and, and also promote. attitudinal changes, right? right? And that's number one. Number two is, um, you know, when I uh, actually uh, ventured out to, uh, you know, have something, a social enterprise of my own and, uh, you know, do this from a corporate setup, um, you know, there is not still a lot of credibility of the work we do. Correct. Right. That's so, so for example, I had my, since you ask uh, incidents, I had my bhua who asked me, you know, uh, an aunt, she said, why are you doing this? You know, you are in a set corporate job. We read your articles. We're so proud of you. You know, why are you then doing this? this? Are you, are you <laughs> wanting to get into politics? You know, and you know, politics is a dirty game. Don't get into that. So I think half my relatives still think that I want to get into politics and which is why I have started doing this, so you know, not realizing, not realizing that there is a credible space for something like this you know and there is a credible space for something there's you know and 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 I uh, and eventually I had to seek a lot of like-minded people like Sarika and uh, some of our friends you know where we connect and we communicate to each other and you know we we talk about our own challenges and we also entertain within each other because you know we are not the kitty tap party types etc we, we're concerned about our city right and and yet we want to have some fun yet we want to be normal we are humans you know so so that's the second thing was about uh, credible space and therefore finding like-minded people was so critical Otherwise, you know, we wouldn't have survived this long. The third thing was that, you know, I would love to see when social enterprises are also commercially sustainable, you know. So having models where good, intelligent, professional people will only get into social, uh, you know, initiatives and social enterprises when, you know, there are commercially ways of, uh, you know, also getting some mileage in terms of financial mileage out of it. And I 100% believe, and it's my really, uh, you know, it is my belief that if you are doing goodness, there should be money in goodness too. You cannot be doing charity or philanthropy. So, uh, you know, these two, three challenges, I would say that, you know, I would love to see uh, more social enterprises come up, love to see more intelligent, professional, focused, hardworking people get into this space. I'm sure, like, you know, there are, there's a generation or maybe there, there are people who have similar visions and that message is being put across. I mean, there are ways that we are doing it. So I'm sure this challenge will soon be not so Absolutely. We are seeing the change. We are right. seeing the change. But, uh, you know, for, for us, you know, we had to struggle and find our spaces. Right. It's a slow so, process, yeah. but it's coming forward. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Yeah, sure. Can we have you, Sarika? Yeah. 
Uh, so a lot of uh, common things actually that both of them have shared. Uh, but uh, you know, one major thing that I want to uh, share with you all, as we as a citizen or as a human being and what we say that our political leaders or bureaucrats, we don't set up our priorities in our life. That's the major, uh, you know, anecdotes or the issues that I can see. Uh, we always, uh, you know, always in a grievance mood. We are not there for solving the problems. There is no like, we always go with a problem to like, you know, as a kid also, we will we go to our parents with a problem, not with two option of solutions also. So that is something, you know, uh, I see a biggest challenge uh, with uh, all of us uh, as a practitioner, as a advocates uh, of different issues that we are working to, uh, on uh, any social issues that we are talking about also. Always is there is a problem. And what I see that the priorities in our life or in our cities or in our whole um, political system also, we don't prioritize things. So what is the requirement of our country or our city or our family right now is? So as, in, uh, as, uh, as India as a country and the city I live, Gurgaon as a city, which is you know go going towards more urbanized city, Mm, although it was a you know semi-urban and all that, but in in last ten years the way it is urbanized, we not set our priorities uh, priorities accordingly. The way we need to develop our cities should be inclusive city, where we have equal space for all the uh, you know citizens of the city. We never understand uh, you know the one of this uh, major uh, as as you said that there is a story, so. Nine years back, I shifted to Gurgaon from Delhi. And frankly speaking, like, you know, I always say that, okay, Gur, uh, Gur, Delhi is one of the receptive cities and, you know, who adopt you quickly and studying in Delhi, been in Delhi for last 20 years, I've seen that Delhi adopt you quickly. But when I shifted to Gurgaon, like, you know, I was always feel like I have uh, been uh, you know, uh, segregated from a particular society. And, uh, oh, okay, so middle class, higher class, there's a lot of uh, this uh, thing was there in Gurgaon. And in, uh, when I, uh, because the way we plan our city, as a planner, I can understand that the way we have planned our city as Gurgaon is always high rise, um, you know, um, uh, villas and the markets and the malls and the good uh, good schools, high-end school, high-end hospitals. We never thought of having something for uh, middle class, like, you know, okay, where a kid have a good quality of education, but which is, uh, you know, affordable. Approachable, so, for, approachable all. for all. So that was, that's a quite, kind of, you know, uh, problems. Uh, and issues that the cities are facing right now. And uh, what I believe is that, you know, you need to understand it first. You need to practice it first. So when I, when I was in Delhi, I never used a car. We were not having it. We were totally dependent on public transport. Although still we complain that, okay, Delhi don't have a good public transport system. Of course, the demand is more and there is no adequate supply. But if you compare to a city like Gurgaon, where there is hardly any public transport system. So when I shifted, I was not knowing driving. And I was like totally uh, dependent on some one or the other to move out from my house, step out from my house to buy grocery also. So that's how I made, uh, like, you know, first met uh, Shubhra in one of the workshops he organized to how to make Gurgaon walkable. Uh, so it is like, you know, and I was like, wow, this is the, this is the place where I can actually express my things. And uh, after shifting to Gurgaon, I bought a bicycle. And throughout my childhood, I am from a very poor district, a poor city in India, which is in Orissa. And whole of my childhood, I was cycling or walking for any of my commute. I was totally independent, actually. I was totally independent in that way. Here you are dependent, there is a parking available or not. If you are in a car, that you are totally dependent on something. 
But as a pedestrian or a cyclist, you are totally independent. I was independent in a small town, but here I become dependent. So I bought a cycle and I started cycling and there I realized how unsafe it is. And there we started this movement called Rahagiri to, you know, uh, talk about the safety because we all, you know, we, uh, can any one of you tell how many percentage of people who own a car in Delhi or Gurgaon? Yes? Percentage, any percentage that you have in your mind? Anyone else? So in Delhi it is just 8% and in Gurgaon it is just 15% people who have, yeah. And what we develop, yeah, what we do is we just plan for them. We invest for them. All our investor, all the public money goes for these people, which is unsustainable, which is creating pollution in our city. But all our investment, all our public money is focused on developing such infrastructure. But we don't, how your maids, domestic helps, drivers, cleaners come to home? Do we realize? And they are the 70% of the population of a city. We are not. We are minor. We are in the minority actually, not them. If you see the pop number of population, number of housing, either square feet or whatever, it is them. They are not the minority, we are the minority. But when we plan our city, when we fix our you know, investment of a city, when we plan our budget for a city, we just neglect them in the city. We don't give any budget in particular development for them the one who are the 70% of the population of a city. So that's how we started this. And that's why all this fight is about, you know, how to, how to make people understand who has the voice. We have the voice, we are sitting here and talking about. So we as a citizen who are like, you know, who can talk about behalf of them. Because uh, I work on safety of pedestrian and cyclists, as I said earlier. So in India, more than two lakh people died due to road traffic crashes. More than two lakh people. We are the leading country in that. And 50% of them are pedestrians. And 50% of them are pedestrians, then almost 15, 49% of them are poor, who are the bread earner of a household. So that's how this whole thing of economic imbalance and everything small scale, businesses or small scale, uh, everything impacts on them. That's why we lose 3% of our GDP because of this. So we need to understand all this thing and we need to voice out this on behalf of them, talking about them, that how unsafe they are in a city. Either it is movement, either it is their commute or their livelihood or the way they are living in a city. Uh, so that's how we thought, let's us cycle. And as I said, uh, there is, uh, sorry if I'm taking a lot of time. So I just want to tell a funny thing. When we went to the authority and the political leader of our city, when we said that, you know, we want to start this uh, Rahagiri day, where we want to block uh, certain uh, kilometer of street, and we, uh, and we will not allow any vehicle, and just people will come there and walk, cycle, kids will come, do skating over there, there will be yoga and all that. They said, are you mad? Who walk in this city? Who cycle in this city? That was their reaction. So if you allow people in Gurgaon, uh, they, can they can take their vehicle till their bedroom. So this is, this, is the, this is the kind of knowledge they were having. So one thing I said, the priority. Second thing is knowledge. Right. You know, like you said, you know, 70% people have cars or 40% people have this. So knowledge is the biggest problem. So platform like this, it should be more, more of such discussions, small uh, focus group discussion happening around all this, helps you to understand, to get that knowledge that what is the reality in the ground. So then we said, no, in Gurgaon, around 70% people either walk or cycle. They got surprised. I said, we have data, we have survey data because they don't understand this uh, demography of the people who are in the city, they don't think they are part of the city because no, they, are not, they, say, they think 
that they are not adding to their uh, city's economy or GDP. But again, one more thing as a knowledge sharing, I'm telling you, 50% of our GDP in our country comes from this informal sector, our thela wala, our pav bhaji wala, our golgappa wala, or a fruit wala. Jo roadside vendor hote hain, like sorry, uh, to whom we neglect and we said that let's throw them from our street, they are the one who are actually, actually, uh, you know, uh, contributing to our GDP and so far we are not in a recession in our country just because of them, not because of people like us who are working and, uh, you know, earning money, so-called, but it's just because of them we are not into recession in our country. So that is how, you know, prioritizing, getting a good, like, you know, actual knowledge about your own things, there only you can debate and discuss about things. So that is uh, what, you know, kind of things that I want to share here. Wow, this was so insightful. <laughs> so I think you very appropriately said that most of us are not even aware of this information. Like here, you know, we do not even know that, you know, like so many people in the urban, uh, urbanized sector are actually, I mean, there are still so many people who don't own cars and who are actually using other methods of reaching to places. So it's very interesting and insightful of how and where we are taking this talk. So I'd like to add to this, like in my particular field or where I come from as a designer, so uh, not a lot of people here in India, despite of the fact that it's been, uh, it's been our tradition and heritage, still understand the nuances of textiles. Whereas if you, you know, if you go out and you talk to people, if you're traveling, you would understand that they appreciate the work that we do. But here we don't realize as to, uh, you know, what we are lacking and what, what are the things that we have in hand which we should be taking forward. So I think the right way to go about is to have more platforms like this and have share more information. Shubhraji, you want to add While to this? we were just coming here, right. she and I were discussing about a particular video on WhatsApp and it relates to what you do. And it talks about like we go on diet, we need to go on a fashion diet, right? right. And also uh, that video later on talks about um, that whenever you buy a garment, you know, you should know whether who's the weaver of the garment. Right. Yeah, and also uh, also whether he was paid adequately. Absolutely. So it it's goes in sync race. with what she's saying that right. talk about the marginalized, talk about right. the people who work for you. Exactly. So, yeah, so, so, uh, so I think uh, going forward, there will be a, a revolution where products will have the name of the weavers, uh, you know, people it. who've made the thing, and also some uh, assurance about whether he was paid and exactly. whether the entire process was sustainable. Sustainable, right. Yeah, so yeah. that needs to be transparent. Right. right. So I would also like to add to that. Yeah. <laughs> it's an interesting topic that started. Um, when I came to India, I noticed that women in India wear such a beautiful, colorful dresses. And I think we are a fantastic representation of that, right? Uh, we choose one color, two colors, that's all. Uh, whatever the shop gives us, because it's the easiest to, to, to make it from one piece, right? So it's the cheapest thing we can buy. And um, I was always wondering if in India, women and um, and people are paying so much attention to clothes, such beautiful clothes, why there are no very famous uh, fashion designers uh, in the worldwide area? There are Versace, Dior, all of these, but where are Indians in this, right? Um, and I noticed that for a lot of people, there is this inspiration, West is the inspiration, and that's where a lot of people are trying to, to find their, the way and presenting themselves, are, oh, I'm, I'm better than others, I'm different than others. But actually, that's not the way to go. <laughs> because right. in the West, we have boring clothes, we have uh, less sustainable lifestyles, we produce much more garbage, our lives are much, we have more roads, more cars, which emits uh, to, the, to the environment, and so on and so forth. And I really appreciate in India that there are here already so many amazing sustainable solutions, which people don't really want to use because they are not fashionable anymore. Kadi. Yeah, this absolutely. simple That's example, right. or chewing neem tree instead of using the plastic Brush. toothbrush, absolutely. or matka, or copper bottle. I could continue <laughs> with right. a lot of different ideas, um, but I wish that uh, 
to that we all find those uh, solutions here and to get proud of them that this is something that really you want to use and not only look at the west or new uh, plastic bottle somewhere in the i don't know having a starbucks plastic thing which is plastic cups which is super fancy because you have right. the logo over there no it's right. not right. it's coconut it's much more fancy absolutely <laughs> absolutely yes. so this leads me to a question that would you like to like yes of course bringing in more awareness and in information is one thing but would you like to tell the millennials or let's say the generation or in terms of the public like one thing that they could do every day that brings about a very like a positive impact to the society well that we would like to start with you so something that you we already one? said a lot of a couple of things no you can go one. ahead <laughs> so you can go ahead and kind of suggest and try that to combine would. them right number one that because of my background and career career it's a very important thing and how we use our uh, everyday life to contribute eight hours a day or even more we use at work so what i would like young millennials to know is you can make exactly the same wonderful career as a sustainability professional there are a lot of opportunities a lot of uh, organizations are trying to find really talented people who are for instance someone is a marketing person you don't need to market the toothbrush the plastic toothbrush you can market a sustainable idea you can use your talent in some other area the same if you are trying if you want to be solopreneur or entrepreneur you can be a journalist writing about uh, i don't know uh, new cars which are being launched or you or fancy hotel or you can write about sustainable tourism right. it's your choice that these options are available that's number one number two is that especially millennials they have so much power that they might not realize. And a great example was just on Friday when there was the whole week right now, there is a global strike right. where they started by 16 year old. old. That's right. so impressive, isn't it? Right. And uh, even a minister of commerce and finance is talking about millennials, Absolutely. right? right. <laughs> what kind of influence the mindset of millennials has on our economy, on our development. Uh, so I would like them to, I would like all of us actually to, to be aware of that our small little choices every day, every day, not using a plastic uh, straw, uh, not using the mug, it all matters so much that we can't even imagine, we can't even imagine. I think I'll just continue from where you ended and say that you know we all need to go on the sustainable journey whether it is uh, and also a minimalistic journey i think we have aped uh, the west for too long and uh, indians by nature you know the indians ke liye word hota tha kifayat hum log kifayati log hote the ha to hum waste we never used to make a lot of waste we never used to we are not consumerist like the west but you know we are making half hearted attempts towards the west and therefore started producing especially in the cities a lot of waste you know um, uh, 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 wasting a lot of water resources we were not like that indians habitually are you know they know ways of minimalization ways of recycling we were always recycling as a as a youngster i remember i used to always get books of my cousin you know uh, to study we were always happy to have uh, you know the the the, the uh, you know my elder cousins uh, you know uh, things that she wore to you know wear the, and i we would take that very proudly these days our children don't do it they want fresh books and they want fresh clothes and new set of um, uh, pair of shoes and new pair of this thing so i think वो जो हमारा एक था सलीका था एक हमारा किफ़ायत रहने का रिसाइकलिंग में रहने का कम वेस्ट करने का हर चीज़ का एक यूज़ निकाल लेते थे वी आर वेरी इनोवेटिव आई थिंक वी नीड टू गो बैक टू दोज वेज वी विल नॉट डू जस्टिस टू आर फ्यूचर जनरेशन इफ यू if you ape the west and we have already seen the negative impacts of it gurgaon if you do not do anything about gurgaon we will lose uh, ground water there will be no ground water next year in gurgaon the things are so bad right so uh, things like you know doing a and going for a bucket bath you know uh, rather than shower bath or uh, you know uh, uh, using soaps that do not make so much lather 
you know. Uh, so ingenious ways of uh, using the RO systems, for example. We can do so much to uh, save our water. We can uh, do so much by uh, not taking to plastics by using a metal bottle whenever we are traveling because we tend to actually use a lot of plastic bottles when we are traveling when we buy water because we are always concerned about the quality so we are buying these bottled water i must tell you that bottled waters bottle the the water that you carry the plastic bottle that you get from the market it has more plastic it has microplastics so 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 that is uh, that is bad in fact you should carry a metal bottle where, where you can get it refilled etc so there's no you can think of so many ways to uh, you know uh, leave a lesser footprint on this earth there's so many ways uh, we've talked about ways we've talked about water one can actually uh, uh, have solar generation rather than using grid energy there's no end to this thing but uh, Take two or three things and, you know, make that uh, as your, uh, you know, lifestyle. Make that as your habit change. And, and I think you will enjoy a life uh, of uh, living uh, sustainably and minimalistically. Thank you. I'd like to add to that a little bit. So I read an African pro proverb. So it said, we, we're not, Mother Earth is not inherited to us by our ancestors, but we actually borrow it from the new generation. So we should not consider it us, you know, like that this is like our right to kind of exploit what we have. We should try and save as much as we can for the newer generations to come. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, I think our generation from last 20 years, like, you know, who are in now 40s and 50s are the most destructive uh, generation, I will say. We always said, oh, our parents were so orthodox, so oh, they were this, so oh, our grandparents were. But if you see the whole system, the way their lifestyle was, was actually more cultured and more sustainable than right. what we are right now. Without understanding exactly. the context of it. We exactly, just... exactly. So even the way our cities were planned, see our ancient city like Banaras, Okay, or any other old city like Pink City area or what? Why they were at that time had this narrow lanes and multi-storied. Now we are as a planner coming again to such planning. Oh, we need compact planning. Oh, we need, you know, yes, we need compact cities, coordinated cities. Uh, we need high rises. And we know that time also, any city you see, old cities, either Nalanda University, you see the way the university has developed, Banaras you see, or uh, even, uh, you know, Gujarat, uh, the Kutch area, you see the way, uh, even in Orissa, uh, you see the whole Bhubaneswar and all that, the way it has been developed, it was not sprawl anyway, because people again wanted to be, you know, commute less, because if you have a compact city, then you just need to travel two kilometer, three kilometer, four kilometer for war, work, and you can actually walk, okay? And then whole thing about, you know, compact cities, everything you are having in your own vicinity, like your schools, uh, your uh, shopping, uh, there was no, no mall culture, and this whole markets, open markets, all this kind of, uh, you know, planning that time our planners had, was more and more sustainable than the way okay. we are planning yes. our cities right now and developing our cities right now in the world of modernization. This is not modern. They were more modern thought they were having. We are totally, you know, they were having the whole vernacular thought of planning cities and developing cities. Uh, so I think we are again going to same thing and actually we are talking about the same thing right now as an architect and a city planners, you know, how we should go to our ancient kind of planning and uh, designing the cities. And as Shubhra said, you know, in that way, you actually uh, reduce a lot of waste. You know, if you have a compact city, then your sewage system, your drainage system, your everything become compacted. You know, you don't need so much of infrastructure for that, your city then. So that is how we can actually mm, look into more sustainable way of living and uh, addressing these issues. And first thing, uh, again, uh, you know, one last thing I just wanted to tell is do your own bit. That is very important. You just, every day you think what extra thing that you have done today, which you don't need in your life. 
Would you like to suggest a few things that we usually end up doing and yes. then we can so kind of… Yes, so for example, a lot of shopping that we do right. unnecessarily that we don't want so much clothes. Right. But we have a habit of, okay, we have money, so let's go and shop. Right. You can use that money in very different ways to actually, so we are uh, thankful to God and we are the privileged people actually. When, when I tell some, some of my known or friends or all that, oh, we should help this, you know, underprivileged school or this and that, we should start donating and all that. I said, no, we have earned it. Because we are educated, we have studied it good in college, we have studied there, we are working so hard to earn this money. They have not done it. No, I said, no, it is not you. It is the society who has given you. So you have to give back to that. You have to give back. Okay, so that way, please try to give back to your society because you are the privileged one who can give back. You know, so please try to give back. Second thing, actually, we need to be in diet in everything. You are running out of time. <laughs> diet on everything, actually, not just food. Uh, die time also, not talking much, sorry. <laughs> Last thing, so actually just uh, get into all this, how you can actually reduce uh, uh, your own needs and deeds in your life. That is, I think we can make a very beautiful world. I'd like to just conclude to it that we are uh, basically, um, the consumer behavior right now and collectively what we're, our consumption is at an all time high right now. So we can try and minimize that and have a more minimalistic lifestyle and make the entire planet Earth, uh, leave this planet Earth for the, for the next generations to come. So uh, just have more thoughtful actions in uh, everyday processes that we do. That's about it. Thank you so much.